Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Combat Mission Beyond the World. Uh, this is the final battle. Final battle for Canadian Armageddon. It's an um, operation that is based on um, Operation Atlantic. Yeah, that followed I think Operation Spring um, for the Canadians that was trying to take over Bears Ridge. Um, I mean, I don't know exactly what the purpose for the operation was, but it was trying to kind of draw in the Germans so that the Americans could launch their own operation called Cobra. And I think the Germans thought that the British and Commonwealth troops were the main thrust of the attack, so they drew all the resources uh, to defend the rich and to counterattack the Canadians. I think Operation Atlantic was successful, where they were um, able to take over this farm called Trotbau, and also uh, challenge the uh, Germans in the various rich area where they had some uh, farms, I guess, or small town. Uh, but then the Germans attacked back and they were organized. And I think Operation Spring, uh, where the Canadians entrusted to further build upon the successful uh, gains in the previous operation, uh, suffered some communication breakdown. And it was during the like, I guess pitch dark blackness um, they really didn't train for so yeah they uh, were defeated back and they had some very hard time I think they were able to defend the farm though but on the other side they were I think driven back to uh, St. Andre uh, which is uh, I think covered in battle number 2 or 3 so yeah it was unfortunate setback uh, but then it had the intended effect of drawing the Germans in um, 272nd Armored uh, Division of the Germans and also some SS um, and uh, may have helped the Americans take that you know uh, express train called Cobra and then uh, ride it all the way to Falaise uh, where they were able to entrap the Germans um, 100,000 of them and yeah capture them which was a big victory for the Allied side. Yeah, so we have here uh, the deployment, uh, newly deployed troops. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's uh, more or less the same from the last battle because the map really didn't advance and deployment zone really didn't change at all. So I think I gained a bit, but I didn't, I didn't even get the whole farm for deployment, so I had to improvise a bit. And then station all my troops here, the Piat at the farthest border facing the Germans. I'm kind of, yeah, um, kind of worried about the German armor charge. I don't know whether they received additional reinforcement. I'm, I'm hiding all of these guys, you know, just in case. And I guess they have intended effect of drawing the Germans in or something, but I don't know. Yeah, I think it was un really unnecessary. And yeah, there's a piazza all there. Yeah, in the houses and in the wood. The biggest question is whether I can fire the piazza from the second floor, which offers them better um, line of sight. On the right side, it's basically the same thing. Uh, with the tanks in the positions where I found them the most effective and they were able to destroy some German tanks while suffering little. So I just used that position which provided very good results for us right in the middle. Yeah, Who knew that it was the highest point where the tanks would have the most vantage, the best vantage point. Alright, so the first turn is well, basically started, and you can see from the corner of our eyes, there's some German tanks popping up. Uh, these are the destroyed tanks, I'm just checking whether there are any live tanks poised to attack on our right side. Here you definitely can see some additional German tanks amongst the, um, yeah, the destroyed and abandoned tanks that we were able to put out of action in the last battle. Yeah, here's some Panzer IVs. There's a one crack Panzer IV that I'm rather wary of. And looks like that our 
tanks are Shermans, one Firefly and the Sherman 3 is going to be fighting some tank battle right from the get-go. It's too bad because I should have placed Piat a bit farther up or moved them a bit forward so that the tanks will face the Piat first and get ambushed. But then I just wanted the direct method of engaging them first and then if my tanks are knocked out then um, the Piat will take over. Right now, I am assuming that the Germans have really not received any additional tanks. I mean, they brought already 18 tanks, so um, I thought that would be enough to cause us trouble. The Armageddon. I mean, if, if they brought like 4 or 5 more tanks, I could manage, but... Yeah, I mean, they could have been really difficult. Could have been driven back a bit from the farm if they actually charged them with infantry. Uh, yeah, so ambush marker once again, I'm just trying it out, but it's going to engage the tanks first because of its, um, it's on the road basically. I put it right behind the Stuk 3, but I don't think it really matters. I think it's rendered um, invisible or something. But it could have been, it could have worked. I mean, I read accounts of German tanks like hiding behind haystacks on the field. Uh, while the Canadians are advancing and just coming out of haystacks and engage them. Uh, surprising them uh, right in the middle of the night. So I'm kind of wondering whether I could use some of the cover here, like trees and uh, like here for example, the Piazza hiding here. And uh, yeah, tanks are... the German tank is actually moving not into the road. They uh, face the tanks in the middle, surprisingly. I thought they were going to face the Shermans. On the other side of the farm but yeah they they um, just move a bit forward uh, to outflank us or something to find another entryway into the farm now engaged by the firefly in the middle here yeah we are just waiting for the german tanks to come waiting for them is going to be more advantageous for us yeah, just have to turn the turret instead of the tank and that was it that German tank didn't move at all after being shot at, so it was kind of, it was acting as a scout. And the other tanks didn't even move, so it was waiting for the tank to see whether they can actually move uh, away from the main entryway. And then maybe outflank us, but we are just waiting for them uh, with uh, four tanks, so yeah, I'm kind of wondering what they're going to do. Uh, I have set the artillery up, I forgot to do it in the first turn. And yeah, so those are the 75mm mortars shoot faster clip than the 105mm. And this guy, this uh, Firefly already has uh, identified a target that Panzer 4H that stopped dead in its tracks after being fired upon. Um, and these are the artillery spotters that are spotting four artillery uh, strikes in the armored I guess armor, German armor, and also the last known positions of infantry in the cover of trees and shrubs. And the 105 mm ones are yeah, aiming at the suspect location of the Germans along the road uh, near the cover. Yeah, so this guy has a line of sight, and I think it's also uh, been detected by the Panzer 4H. So it's going to be uh, some exchange of fire. Yeah, I do. I, I think I see the Firefly moving its turret, but it's not firing. It has already been 15 seconds or so. Yeah, I think it's moving, but it's not firing for some reason. It has uh, plenty of armor piercing uh, rounds, but I guess this guy backing up kind of confused it. Yeah, uh, very missed, very missed. Few, few meters, and also being shot at from the middle. And this guy shoots pretty well and destroys the Sherman in its first shot, the Sherman 3 that was on the road behind the Stu 3. And now um, we identify these guys on the road, cover near the road. Uh, we fought them and tried to defeat them. I think we did in the last battle, but they have set up shop once again. And here, um, I think that was a Firefly, finally taking a shot and destroying the tank. Yeah, it took some time. Uh, at the end of the first turn there, we're going to have one minute to shoot. 
And this guy is unfortunately the Sermon 3 that was destroyed on the road. Yeah, so Firefly did shoot and uh, found its target, destroyed it, but it was a bit too late. Air target right there, yeah, it's begun firing. It's able to actually see where it is spotting, so it's pretty quick. Yeah, it takes only one turn for the artillery to respawn. And kind of thinking whether to move the infantry here. Yeah, the infantry that I had saved up on the left side near the farm, I started to move using the cover of trees. Kind of afraid because exact area was under German artillery strike, as you can see by the craters and all the holes there. So I'm moving them into cover, under cover, but further closer to the German tanks. And by now, I think I get the a little bit of sense that. Germans didn't receive an additional armored contingent or attachment. Yeah, they didn't receive any reinforcement, so I am trying to see whether I can move the infantry. And here I am using the carriers first, I think, to move them. Although the mortars can actually see them and can, um, yeah, for some rounds to soften them up because the resistance there in the last battle was pretty fierce and all the fully um, healthy troops basically doing target practice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my goodness, yeah, the Firefly, the Firefly, our tanks are destroyed uh, near the farm. I think the Germans were able to really have an accurate shot here, first or second shot. And the Cromwell actually hit the gun there, hit the gun of the crack Panzer. And then if it was just veteran tank or regular experienced tank, they would have abandoned it because, you know, obviously they know that gun becomes useless, then they're, they're sitting in um, on a vehicle that is as effective as any half track. Soon uh, come under fire from other tanks, then they'll be toast. But the crack team, they stay put, although the gun has been damaged. Um, they used the machine gun or something, at least. Yeah, so the gun was hit on the cracked panzer that destroyed our firefly. Uh, I don't know exactly what damage it caused, whether the gun is can be operated you know, the turret cannot turn or something like that, then it's going to be just the Stuk 3. You can still uh, use the threads to aim the gun. Yeah. Yeah, it's been damaged, so we'll soon tuck it up to another um, trading of tanks. But it's unfortunate I'm losing Fireflies. Yeah, the Firefly did pretty well too in the last battle against the Panzer. Uh, was, it was able to destroy some unsuspecting Panzers, but for some reason, it took a bit more time to adjust its gun, and uh, maybe because it was, um, yeah, I don't know exactly why, but the Germans were faster and uh, more accurate, and I don't have any armor support in the farm. Uh, fortunately, I have some Piat um, getting ready, and I have these carriers to start the attack on the right side, and also scout for us. Alright, so beginning the turn number three, I believe. Or four. Yeah, so we are shooting at the crew that just bailed out of the destroyed tank, but not the crack team. You know, still inside the tank, fighting its time. I can probably still shoot, so I cannot really uh, assume anything right now. And our artillery is hitting this position where I uh, think I mentioned before. I suspected uh, some presence of infantry and a uh, gun. It was there last time, knocked out my carrier. Yeah, right there. And now uh, this guy, Stuk 3, is destroyed. There was some explosion there. And it was 
actually able to get up a shot that hit the tank firefly but not destroyed it but this guy now finished this job that the Strix Street couldn't do unfortunately another firefly knocked out and there was a huge explosion nobody is getting out of that to say the least so another trading of tanks um, yeah, so we are taking on some some damage here. Uh, we are. If it happened like this in the last battle, then I would have been in a far worse position. I could not afford trading up tanks in the last battle. Yeah, they had like 18 and I had only 12, so. Alright, so some tank losses. Uh, I have some Piat ready for any ambush if this guy decides to enter the town. And all the other units, all the other infantry units are hiding. I don't know how effective it's going to be in the broad daylight. Uh, and yeah, alright, so the middle tank series, you can see, have yellow lines uh, stretching all the way across the map. And here I'm uh, using the uh, machine guns and also carriers and also the mortars supporting our infantry movement. Finally, I began to move my infantry there as well on the right side. And then, uh, like I mentioned, the tanks are now aiming squarely at that Panzer 4J. Um, they finished off our Firefly. And, uh, yeah, the Shermans are firing. I think they missed. Oh, uh -oh. and Cromwell. Okay, so Cromwell is able to make good on its shot. Calmly destroyed it on its side. So, and now he's shooting uh, machine guns. Players are now leading the charge, so to speak. Also scouting for us. And I don't know exactly how many Germans are there, but the last time they had a few, more than a few. Yeah, more than a few fully strength German infantry dug in there. They have more holes because I uh, lobbed some artillery in the last battle as well, so it's more craters so that they can hide um, in foxholes and whatnot. And this is on the left side. I suspect there will be a German gun here, alongside some infantry. Yeah, so we are being targeted right from the get-go, right from the edge of that starting point for our group in the right. Um, yeah, so some some battle taking place, trading of tanks, destroying their tanks while suffering our um, our own as well, unfortunately. The Firefly, two of them have been knocked out, only one remains. And that only has armor piercing rounds, so it's not going to be that effective against this dog and infantry. Unless it fires machine gun rounds. And I think here in this game, machine gun rounds are considered infinite, uh, given that it only fights like a simulation of like one day of battle, I think. Even if they were engaged in a heavy battle, I guess they all had machine gun rounds left. I cannot say the same thing for the, the shells, it may run out of course, but the machine gun rounds, I think they had plenty, so the game just simulates they had infinite amount. Um, unlike Man of War though, Man of War definitely has a limit to the machine gun rounds, so I guess that game is more realistic in that count. So yeah, these guys are um, trying to sink on the right side of the map. And now the care is, I don't know, here it is actually reversing. Uh, there's something that it feels is uh, being threatened by. Maybe another tank. Yeah, and then the artillery is not helping. We are focusing all our energy here on that sliver of cover near the road. And they have some machine guns and everything and they're firing at our own Vickers MG position. Yeah, I can see we are returning back. Uh, not really that effective, I guess, because it's further far. In the middle too, the KR is studying for us to see whether we can identify further armor or defensive lines. And some of these guys are running. Um, I don't know how many units they have there. Yeah, it's a pretty good cover, pretty good sliver of cover near the field. They can uh, hide a gun or uh, infantry machine gun positions. Yeah, so the next turn. Uh, we are basically moving. 
And I don't know what happened, but there's some smoke on the left side. Uh, moving in the middle, using the cover, and trying to see exactly what they have. I do believe by this time that the German armor presence has been severely compromised. They didn't receive any additional reinforcements. So, taking a gamble here by moving the infantry. And also turning the tanks from the left side toward the middle, where I hope to support our infantry going now into the field. Open ground, that is. I don't know whether I'm making any uh, impact on the defenses on the right. Yeah, a lot of guys are moving, a lot of Canadians and also some Americans. Carriers are taking a look at what is happening. And some of these guys have been destroyed if the German infantry unit had a Panzer track or two amidst them. I'm trying to give the Germans all that they could handle uh, using the 105mm artillery and now the infantry uh, taking they are going to the field closing on them while on the left side of this screen the carriers are strafing them with the machine gun fire as well and also some tanks joining in the fight as they turn to face them they're I think, consolidating their forces a bit Shortening their lines or something. But still um, adjusting our artillery fire to track their movement. Alongside, I think, what seems to be um, machine gun fire. Yeah, I think that's machine gun fire, the red line going all the way up there. And also, we are. Yeah, we are trying to aim at the, the crack panzer that had its gun damaged. Not so sure whether you can actually shoot the gun still. Yeah, so we are finding additional German infantry hiding there, near the road. So I am seriously thinking about using the tanks to support our guys. And I'm trying to shoot at them from where we are, but yeah, might have to move them to support our infantry now moving into the field. Once again, the gun that I brought um, that was surprisingly preserved from like battle number 3 or 4 the big gun um, didn't really see any use should have put it in the farm as defensive against the armored, uh, armored uh, units on the German side but yeah, I thought that it would be more useful because of the presence of Piat here uh, it would be more useful in the open field on the right side, but obviously I uh, judged wrong. So the more infantry units are coming out of hiding, and they're now aggressively another infantry unit. Yeah, German infantry unit under strength, but still able to fight pretty well. Uh, the Shermans are using both his gun and machine gun to support our infantry, especially the one now is heading uh, into the open ground. Yeah, they are coming under some heavy fire, but we are firing back, of course, along with the artillery. I also have to mention the Germans themselves, themselves have artillery. I was not able to track any artillery spotter in the last battle and eliminate it from the battle. So, yeah, they have their own artillery. Uh, I think they're just fighting their time to. Yeah, they're just fighting their time before they can spot themselves. Yeah, so we are pressuring them. We are pressuring them as they can see they're taking cover on the ground. Some very heavy. Change of fire on both sides. So on the left side, really nothing happened. So I didn't really show what is happening. Just the infantry moved into the cover near the edge of the farm, and now thinking about whether to use a piazza to destroy the crack Panzer 4H or use the infantry to kind of swarm it. Uh, at least one unit from that left side have uh, some kind of a explosive that could destroy it. 
Yeah. I think they use it as... They, they throw it like grenade as the animation for it, but they have a bigger explosive just for the purpose of destroying any armored unit. I think it's called gammon bombs or something. Anywho, I am trying to move some PIs once again. On the left side, nothing really happening. But on the right side... Finally, I blew my tanks. Yeah. Discover more German units hiding there. Uh, being entrenched and uh, aiming at our troops. And having some success, I decided to move my Shermans. Support our troops. Since the Firefly that is nearest to it only have armor-piercing rounds. And I moved the Firefly just in case for anti-armor support. You know, the PIs finally advanced enough that they can aim at the damaged tank over there, but it misses pretty badly. Um, at that distance, around 120 to 130 meters, it has terrible, terrible accuracy. I don't know why it's crawling back, but it was being fired upon by some something. Yeah, at 120 or so meters, they have terrible accuracy, around 5% or so. But I think it just wants to fire. At least if it fires all its six rounds and you can just say that you know it tried its best and then come back to safety. And now they are in the hedge, so it, I guess better protected, but still able to, able to aim. But you can see it's some high explosive rounds being shot yes, from sir. somewhere. Yeah, the gun. Yeah, the gun is still there, so he's able to aim at these guys hiding in hedges and just trying to get out from the farm using that road, so yeah, it's a really good vantage point for that gun. It's in the lower area, but then it's able to basically track a lot of units coming from the farm. It's a really good area. Yeah, right there. It's uh, one of the best vantage points that the Germans could place its gun. And next turn, turn number... Um, what turn is this? Well, I think it's turn number 10 or so. We are still moving. Uh, we are trying to pressure the Germans. I do believe that they are on its uh, hills. And we are trying to move heavy weapons like mortar and piat. Trying to target the tank. And also in the middle, we are just going rather deep into um, uncharted territory for us. Into fog of war. But on the right side, we are yeah, engaged in all-out battle using the Americans now. Yeah, we are being hit from the German uh, gun and it's really accurate. So I think it's a veteran gun that is making the uh, most use out of its high explosive rounds. On the right side, we are keep hitting them. Trying to create more cracks in their defense. Uh, using the tanks to fire machine guns and high explosive shells. You can see the machine guns also joining the action. The Americans are uh, trying to take over the left side of the charge here. And the artillery is really, uh, I think, making things difficult for the Germans. I don't know why, but they're running out in some kind of a kamikaze attack. I think they had enough or something. Yeah, they should have run the other way, not toward us. They're drawing a lot of fire, maybe that was the plan while the other unit retreat. Yeah, and the gun is making a short work of another Piat attempt to destroy the tank. That's yeah, really effective weapon. And we, yeah, we ended our turn here as the German unit is in the field, drawing a lot of fire from the Canadians and Americans now, including the tanks. As you can see by the red lines. Yeah, during all the fire. I think Warren Artillery has uh, spent all its shells. Or I'm saving up. Um, but I'm targeting right now the explicit purpose of destroying that gun that um, is making things very difficult for our Piat. Yeah, have around 70 or so rounds left and I'm I think I can actually see the target, directly identify the target using the binoculars of the spotter. So I'm thinking that 
is going to increase accuracy and effectiveness of the mortar. Here, we are driving some of these guys back and some of these guys forward for some reason. Um, we are basically doing all in, moving more troops into the fight. See what happens. These guys are not really thinking clearly. I think they're just maybe even trying to surrender or something. Uh, running toward us. Yeah, I don't know exactly what their morale is like, but it's going to be pretty low. Because they lost almost all of their tanks and now being hit pretty hard. Um, yeah, by their artillery. And then artillery landed a bit close for our comfort. Yeah, I think the Germans also have some border crew hanging around in the back. Tanks are finally moving in and um, uh, yeah, I suspected as such. Well, maybe I didn't suspect it, but the Germans now throw their own artillery shells at us. Pretty good spot too, yeah, right in the middle. In our, uh, in their soft targets here. The tanks advance nonetheless. Yeah. Just bring it to the Germans, try to take that road. Okay, their three on our part are taking a lot out of the Germans as well. And this 75mm mortar started firing not really that accurately. Oh, that was pretty accurate. But clearly aiming at the gun. That was making things very difficult for our Piat, and now they're not even trying. Yeah, they all went back to the wood, the cover of the wood. Alright, so heavy battle, heavy battle now. Um, with everything is being thrown into the right. And we are moving the last of our troops on the right side. Here I'm trying yet again, have not fired all the Piat rounds. So trying yet again to close the distance to the tank. And this guy is not moving from hiding. And now I'm, yeah, as I mentioned, throwing all the rest of the troops into the fight. Not all of it, but the ones that are deemed most capable. And these guys are now trying to get out, scramble out of the, the artillery, the range of the artillery that began um, falling in the last turn. And also moving some of the vehicles out of the way because these uh, lightly armored vehicles are vulnerable to the artillery. So not really the tanks. I think the tanks can withstand some artillery rounds. Yeah. I have never seen a tank being destroyed by the off-field artillery. Maybe it was considered too overpowered or something. But I'm sure that if 105mm round strikes you know, right there in the middle of the, the Sherman, it's going to surely destroy it in a spectacular fashion. The carriers are still manning the, the front here, uh, trying to cover for the infantry, now scrambling behind it. Oh yeah, the carrier was destroyed by the artillery round, it was a lucky shot. We're still pressuring the Germans though, we're trying to push them out. And now the gun fires up once again, very annoying. PS are just trying to do its job, of course the gun wants to stop it. The Shermans are forming a major part of our advance in the right. And right now it's in a really dominant position. The infantry now trying to scramble away from the artillery firing range of the drones. And the mortars are trying to help. I don't know how much help that they were able to provide, but I think it did help in this case because they were firing relentlessly right from the get-go and I added to the mortar crews to aim at this position and it's now chock full of holes and pits and craters it's seen some... Um, yeah, it's seen some, a lot of explosions and damage alright, so we have moved our troops in the middle that's the, one of the farthest points that we've gone into German-held territory yeah, in the middle and now we have some different angles from which we can attack the gun. 
and also bringing some additional troops from the rear. Yeah, attack them from a different angle, and also try to help the Piat here to covering fire more or less. And I'm wondering whether we're going to be faced off against the additional German guns because we have brought some additional troops. On the right side, uh, yeah, basically trying to get out from the German artillery range and also keep the pressure up. Yeah, you can see the Germans are trying to run away from the road. The tanks and the carriers, uh, one of them was destroyed, was able to yeah, drive these Germans back along with the artillery. And now infantry can assume that position. Uh, they're moving, the Americans are leading right now. While the tanks and the carriers are and also the half track with its higher capacity machine gun helping, helping the infantry in that area. And here, uh, <laughs> barrage of artillery and mortar fire is pounding this pollution. Uh, the German gun somehow not destroyed. And goodness, yeah, the Sherman was actually hit, but no serious damage. I think it was lucky that he was able to escape yeah, the fate of a lot of different Shermans that was hit in the turret exposed. Uh, it was known to explode rather easily, so... Yeah, of course the Germans also get the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, and direct shot it seems, but... I don't know what is happening over there, it's something, some kind of vortex force build that is protecting that gun um, yeah still there I think or maybe it's been destroyed but then we just think that it's still there because they've been so fierce and so uh, troublesome for us might as well just assume the worst that nothing really happened gun's still active and aiming for a piat and borders yeah okay so uh, we are still adding more infantry into the attack now into the path of our area of least resistance. And the Piat are still trying. Yeah, they're trying. I mean, I'm not going to fault them for lack of trying, but maybe it's a time for the other infantry to uh, move out and traverse across that stone wall. All right now, we are trying to take the road and um, and also see whether we can advance from the position. There's still some Germans nearby the road, so we need to be careful, but at least we can assume some cover uh, when we arrive at the road. Yeah, we're still shooting at them, driving them back even further. I think I stopped our 30 strike now that I'm moving into that region. Once again, Piat are missing. Yeah. Just too far. I could have moved them a bit closer, but uh, because of the presence of German gun, I was not really willing to risk it. And I'm not really in that much hurry to destroy it, since it's done, seems to be disabled. Yeah, more Germans are running. I'm wondering why they don't surrender. I have no idea. I think the morale is low enough that some of them might be willing to surrender I don't know, they're just running back yeah they're in trouble here, uh, if you remember uh, battle number 5 when I took over the the farm, the trotball farm there was some mortar unit that was hurling like basically everything, like, including the kitchen sink at us and doing a really good job of it too and I think it did his back and he's striking our uh, forces in the middle pretty well uh, yeah using mortar pretty effectively and the resisting stopping us dead in our tracks I'm still trying to uh, place the infantry forward 
yeah, I'm trying to pressure them, of course, and once again, I'm moving, yeah, moving all the troops from the rear that I feel are going to be important, like the mortar units, uh, to add to the final push. So, 10 more turns left to the conclusion of this operation. So far, it has been one sided, definitely. And I don't really hear anything more from the Germans, their armor. So, yeah, this mortar is a big problem once again, just like the gun. I don't know whether it was a gun or the mortar. That was mortar. And we are having a lot of trouble in identifying it, let alone uh, trying to shoot at it. I don't know where they are, but they can see us. I don't know whether they're actually targeting the area of our collision, but yeah, they're really effective here. I don't know. Basically, um, hitting us left and right. Um, I don't know, like the troops there caught in the mortar barrage cannot really do anything. They just. Yeah, they're just out of their. out of ideas, I think, here. So I need to move them. Um, I need to admit defeat and move them. Yeah, I think it's that mortar unit from the Battle 5 doing a heck of a job against the unit that took over the middle of the trot ball. So yeah, our middle is in trouble just from the single uh, mortar unit, it seems. And now I need to make adjustments, unfortunately. But it's not that simple. Um, exposing a lot of troops to unnecessary uh, harm here. I could just use tanks if I knew that there would be no more German tanks around uh, to just charge in, but then there was that gun, of course. Yeah, so I'm moving these guys back from the middle, but these guys forward. I had enough and then I'm um, just trying to use brute force while moving the Piat back a bit. Uh, I think that Piat is empty, so it's gonna miss all its six shots. I think he hit the tank with one of its shot, but it didn't do any serious damage. In the middle, yeah, I'm moving back these guys that are under mortar fire, but I'm moving the other guys forward. And here, I'm taking over and yeah, taking over this road and see what I can do next. Whether I can follow them into the field or just keep, um, just keep from this position or stop near the road and defend, prepare for some kind of counter-attack if that was to happen. Yeah, mortar still uh, shooting uh, just everything and uh, not really giving an inch. Yeah, we start eliminating these troops, they're not surrendering at all. Everybody moves. Another Piat misses. Unfortunate. And Cromwell apparently uh, took an interest in finishing up this guy now that uh, the tank, the tank with its gun destroyed, still is able to use its machine gun. So uh, that was, uh, I think, from Cromwell. Uh, it bounced off. Unfortunately, I think if you're a crack team of uh, Panzer, then you have the benefit of the doubt and he's able to survive multiple different hits. Um, these guys are now under yeah, machine gun fire from that Panzer, so they're going to be in trouble if the if it's not finished quick. Yeah, on the right side we are just pushing. On the left side we we are trying to um, mop up and take care of business. Then in the middle, I don't know what's happening. The mortar unit, along with its gun, proving to be very difficult to get rid of. Yeah, very difficult to challenge. I should've just rushed it or something. I should I should just ran to the northern part of the field or something. Um, now yeah I'm doing that, but not in a direct manner, but it's kind of a yeah, kind of angle maybe. Yeah, trying to still get out of that area, still under fire from the mortar. I think the mortar has basically every one of its round found a pretty good target. And 
uh, just cause a lot of havoc and injury beat back our attempt um, yeah so mortars in the middle trying to target the gun I think it used it was doing that for a while but it was not effective knocking it out unfortunately on the right side we decided to attack Oh, okay, so, yeah, finally the crack tank is over. It is gone, it's done for. I think we rid of ourselves the last Panzer. Chromel did a good job, although it shot, kind of bounced off and everything. And the gun is still active, the German gun. We are there, yeah, taking interest in that mortar unit. I don't know how he's able to see it. Um, it's really uncanny ability to pick out the most important units in the group. Yeah, and I think that this guy is reading the charge once again. Carrier in the right side. And this guy's in trouble, but I don't know whether it's trying to surrender or something. I'm not so sure. But this guy's not really trying to surrender. Knocked out my mortar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe it's confused or something. Shell shocked. 105mm artillery is now taking aim to prepare the way for the infantry. Uh, while the with the tank knocked out, I think the final tank knocked out on the German side, we are able to use the infantry to move a bit freely um, and overwhelm that gun and mortar unit. By now, I think the mortar unit has um, expanded its, its round and now only has smoke rounds some of which our own mortar units uh, trying to use and cover for the infantry now trying to move into the field in the middle on the right side we are trying to chase the Germans to Germany yeah the mortar is still trying to, you know, knock off that gun, but it's kind of hard. It's hard for us. Although we are on a higher ground and can probably see clearly where the German gun is by now. Yeah, the tanks and everybody is following suit. I'm trying to see if I reach the edge of the map, whether the operation is going to be over. The gun is still shooting. Uh, it's very, very impressive. The resilience of the gun being under that much fire and still be able to attack and make a lot of trouble. Yeah, the gun is, yeah, the gun is apparently aiming at the mortar unit that is able to find, find the target within its line of sight. Yeah, you can see the Germans are kind of cornered in the upper right hand side of the map now. Yeah, by now, I I think this is going to be a full sweep. Just trying to make sure that I, uh, you know, reveal the rest of the map and see uh, if we can reach the end and end the operation on that note. Not really trying to run up the score, but after action report so far, didn't reveal any of the casualties or statistics on the German side. I don't know exactly how many units they lost or um, what their morale level is. I think definitely I was supplied with more infantry. Yeah. And I think they were supplied with more tanks and heavy armament. And more interesting mix of um, vehicles. They had like flat gun uh, trucks and stuff like that. And uh, some armored scout cars. That was pretty, pretty cool. Oh my goodness, one was knocked out from that gun. Yeah. 
It, it was probably, yeah, I think that gun was involved in, like, destruction of at least five of our units. Or more. Just need a number on us, especially against the mortar, um, any stationary targets, and also some bloody armor vehicles, carriers. Yeah, I think I identified a gun right in the middle uh, of battle number three or four, before the night battle. Yeah, it was near the farm, near the, uh, the farm. Yeah, I'm about to engage it in the final battle, final turns of this battle. Finally, um, I think the motor stopped because they ran out of rounds, so I'm moving everybody. Including the guys who um, try to get away from that strike in the middle. Nobody's in panic though, nobody is routed, so they're still in uh, pretty good fighting spirit. And now I identify some Germans manning the edge of the map, holding the last sliver of territory. I don't know why they were deployed a bit forward uh, near the cover, the road, very far. Now they are all running, and this guy is not fighting the infantry encroaching upon their, I guess, German's right side. Yeah, they identified it and then he's able to have a field day there. But there's just too many of us, frankly. And these guys are in a huge trouble right now. Yeah, they're all like two or three, just comprised of two or three soldiers. Out of their original ten, and they are in a poor shape. I mean, number-wise, they have pretty good amount, but as you can see, they are all running or taking cover, so. Not a lot of shots are being fired from the pollution near the edge of the map. Okay, so, um, yeah, trying to still, uh, I mean, on the middle part of the map, we are moving ever close to the gun. And I think we are able to shoot at it in this turn. Uh, gun is preoccupied with the guys on the left. Yeah, all the red lines. In the middle, yeah. So we are also hitting this position using the last bit of artillery, the 5mm artillery shells. And mortar is still active. Uh, one last mortar unit I think I have in that area. Piat also moving along the hedge. Still not be able to knock out the gun. Uh, you have clearly seen like some of the direct hits on that gun, but I don't know, it was able to survive. So either it's really lucky or it's really experienced or something. Yeah, we are just shooting where we find them. And with the support of the tanks. So, another mortar unit joins the foray. Um, getting hit, but as you can see, the difference now even having been knocked out if it was before suspecting that this gun is now out of high explosive shell so it only has AP shell and it's ineffective against soft targets uh, these infantry soldiers so that's why I was able to get out of that rather accurate shot from the gun on escape the Sherman tanks still have some high explosive shots that can shoot at the infantry And they're having a lot of trouble uh, even trying to get out of it and withdraw from the battle. So we are slowly making our way. Just push them right to the edge. Um, I don't know why they don't surrender, because... Um, frankly, if it was me, I would have just surrendered or restarted or something. But yeah, the computer is willing to fight until the bitter end. Turn 22. Yeah, I'm surprised that we still have um, ammo to engage in battle. I would have thought that we are all low in ammo, so the fight would be 
Uh, kind of crawling to a standstill. Um, I have flame floors moving from behind, but yeah, this is slow and delicate. And nobody is in a position right now on the German side where I can attack from the angle. So, following the rest of the troops. And yeah, as you can see. Marsh, marsh, marsh. The right side, yeah, they're being attacked from multiple positions, so the gun is not able to do its job. It's not really being um, pressured. This guy is pressured but too much, running toward us. Surrender? No, they raise their gun and try to fight, so they get shot. Canadians are conserving ammo, but if they get shot, of course they shoot back. Yeah, so they're shooting and being eliminated one by one. Um, sure, there your pistol. Um, I realized weak build is a really, really poor, poor uh, cover for infantry, especially when they run in. Um, very um, ineffective cover. Just a bit better than, I guess, open ground. Yeah. And mostly I use wheat field to go up against some of the entrenched German defensive positions. And that's where I suffer the most too, like during the night attacks. And also the attacks in the beginning uh, where there was a bunker or something near San Andre. Yeah, faced a lot of uh, difficulty because the cover was not good enough. Yeah, you can see that right there. It was basically hit point blank, but because armor piercing, um, it just went right through them without causing any damage. It was high explosive. Oh, and now it is uh, revealed to be um, a Pac-40 gun. Very effective gun, especially against artillery. It's being shot at from Piat and everything. Still able to survive. Still targeting us. Yeah, that was a shot from a Sherman. Finally, they're running. This guy's still targeting us, my goodness. And finally, knocked out. Goodness, yeah. I think I can still, I think I can still use that gun. Pack 40 gun. Yeah, so we're basically driving them for the edge. Uh, just forcing them to withdraw from the battle as quick as possible. So that's. That was turn 23, and turn 24, we are basically taking over the rest of the map. Yeah, so it's a mop-up phase. Nothing really uh, much in terms... Nothing really in terms of resistance. Just shooting where they stand. I'm not even moving at all. Well, the Americans are moving a bit. Yeah, the Canadians are conserving ammo, I think. They're not really shooting. Just a few units are shooting. And that crew that is running, that is being shot, is actually the guy uh, from the Crack Panzer. So they were able to survive using their Crack veteran status. Yeah. I wish, I really wish they could surrender. Just be done with it. Uh, but I don't know, maybe it's a bug or something. Some of them are withdrawing, some of them are running in the wrong direction. I think they're just confused at this point. Yeah, so this guy is almost at the edge of the map, running out like that. This guy didn't make it. Alright, so that was turn 24, and now the final turn. Yeah, so the final turn just will see us um, just playing out the operation and see how we did. Yeah, now this crack team of uh, 
tankers are out to fight another day. Possibly in the Battle of the Bulge. Maybe a preview of what's to come next. Um, yeah, so. Still fighting. Still, some of them are fighting. I guess, good for them. Then is the artillery spotter for our German artillery that uh, aimed at us in the right. So, last 10 seconds of this operation. Yeah. Alright. Making them run. And. Yep. Yeah, that's it. I think two or three units left from where we started. Um, and some of them, of course, have withdrawn out of the battle. Alright. So that was the battle, and let's just see how we did. Yeah, so the map has definitely been a pretty long one, kind of narrow. I think some maps are definitely wider, provide more coverage, and yeah, they have been interesting. Alright, so after action, report the final summary of this battle, the operation in total. Um, I have. 544 casualties to their 601 but of course it's been inflated because last few turns i was able to inflict a lot of casualties on german side so germans i think suffered less casualties only seven captured none surrendered in this battle for some reason six mortars destroyed seven guns and 25 vehicles knocked out the germans brought around i think 18 tanks and all of them were knocked out um, so I guess it's a bit of a victory for us, I guess for our tank crews that brought what I consider to be inferior tanks and was able to survive. Uh, at least in the battle number 6 where I um, felt won the operation. Yeah, so you can see from the accurate statistics now. During the game they don't really tell you because it's not really identified. Part of fog of war or something, but now after everything said and done, they know exactly what this unit did on the enemy side. So they, yeah, most of these German tanks were able to knock out one tank at least and cause some infantry casualties. So he was able to trade, well, at least take one tank off of us, but we had two guns that brought the additional firepower and. Yeah, we were able to destroy more tanks per tank on our side. Yeah, so as you can see, the yeah, Cromwell did pretty well in the middle. Yeah, I think I just uh, sacrificed too much of our Cromwell force uh, in the battle number 6. I lost all 4 in the first 3 turns. Okay. So some of the Shermans, yeah, they did pretty good in leading the charge, supporting our infantry on the right side. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, operation in whole. Uh, definitely come back next and see what I can do. I don't know whether I'm going to do more operations. Um, I might start with some, um, I don't know, American missions on Karen 10. If there's any operation based out of it, then I will do that. But there's a big one that deals with um, ballets or Battle of the Bulge. So I will be more inclined to try that. Um, yeah, I really thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it like I did. And until next time in combat mission, please stay tuned.